Hello, I'm Robbie Adair, and with me is my co-host, Robert Jacoby. Uh, today, we're going to be doing the episode 159 of Do the Woo, where we talk about business. Uh, so we do a lot of talk around different aspects of business. Today, we've got a particular topic I think that'll be of interest to a lot of business people out there. Um, so, Robert, why don't you go ahead and tell us who we've got on the show today? Uh, today, we have Angela Jin from Automatic. Angela, if you want to hit that intro. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Angela. Thanks for having me today. I'm a community strategist over at Automatic, where I focus on our programs and contributor experience area for automatics.org division, uh, which is the division that is sponsored full-time on uh, to be on the WordPress uh, open source project. Um, I've been using WordPress for about 10 years now. Uh, that is like a million years longer than me. But don't tell anyone. And we're also uh, excited to have today uh, the man with three names, uh, Jeff Reed, Jeff, JP, Jeff Paul from 10Up. Yes, thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, uh, Associate Director of Open Source Initiatives at 10Up. Um, we're responsible for our, uh, our open source practice there. And that group uh, is responsible for 10Up's open source plugins. Uh, our contributions to things like WordPress core and other open web projects, uh, handling client work that is the output is actually uh, open source software, and then coordinating our our team's uh, uh, individual contributions to to the open web. Uh, and yeah, three first names. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> what happens in the green room doesn't necessarily stay in the green room. What's what's interesting about this topic per se is all it's like. We're hitting the open source hard here from so many different angles. You know, I, I think, you know, one of the first questions just to get us all a little comfortable and warmed up, and then Robbie's going to do all the hard hitting, I'm sure, uh, is, you know, why open source? I mean, it's a goofy chair question, but I, I think it's fair given how much WordPress dominates that conversation. Yeah, I think uh, it's a great question, right? Like there's so many different options out there. Why why pick WordPress? Why pick open source? And I think for me, that's really because I uh, I want to own my own content. I want to be able to create and, and own what I am creating of my own accord. Um, and also I, uh, I personally strongly align with open source philosophy as well. This idea that anybody can come and work together and build something together and it all, it belongs to us um, and we can use it how we want. Um, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of power for people who are involved in open source. So a bit of a personal answer there for you. No, I mean, that's great because I think a lot of us have personal reasons for why we're not just the wonderful business aspects of the WordPress ecosystem. Um, but you know, there's also something else that drives us and, uh, and I can't wait to hear, you know, Jeff looks at it from the uh, 10 up perspective. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I amplify what, what Angela said and it would, you know, relate it a bit to kind of like the in real life IRL, um, you know, the sense of community of where you live, I think open source, you also can get that sense of community that you might not get, um, you know, with something that's a closed source, small garden. Um, and, uh, you know, I know part of Angela's uh, edict is on the community side of things and, you know, also otherwise agree with, um, you know, just the, the, the four freedoms and what that gives to you know, those that are using the software and, and, and building with it, the, uh, you know, what opportunities that presents everyone. I love it. Cool. And, you know, Robert and I have obviously been in the open source world for quite some time, not always necessarily WordPress, but just open source in general. Um, and, and I think I always, I always tell people, I think you're in open source sharing is caring, right? I mean, we are contributing to something that is used by lots of people, right? But in a sense, Kind of we do this because we also are utilizing it, right, in our own businesses or because we're selling a product that's wrapped around it, whatever. We're just doing services. And so there is still something in it for us. But I think that that sharing is caring, carries over with a lot of our business owners where we see them contributing in other ways. Charities out there, um, uh, 
nonprofits, different things that we do as companies or as business owners or as employees for those businesses where we run uh, charity funds, different things like that. We maybe get a people organized to go and do a fun run that's going to raise money for, you know, a, a pet charity, whatever it might be. And so I wanted us to dive in here and let's let's talk about that uh, from a business perspective. Um, and I think it's really great that we have Angela in here, who's also going to give us from that automatic side of things. But um, let's start with Jeff this time and tell me what's 10 up. How, how, are you, how do you guys get involved with other things? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I um, agree with uh, what you were saying there. You know, for, for 10 up, we certainly exist um, and, and ride on the back of, of WordPress, right? We're able to do what we do because of uh, WordPress being freely available and, and feel that it's, you know, ethically, morally, not necessarily legally uh, responsible for us to, to give back. Um, and, you know, from a, from a 10 up perspective, we um, take a little bit of a blended approach, um, whereas some companies might have somebody that's fully dedicated, um, like everybody in the division that Angela is in to contributing to the project. Others might, you know, have folks that are, are part time or, or kind of rotate through. Um, 10 ups approach is, is kind of a blended of the, the sorts where we have my team, the open source practice that is, that is all set up to, um, contribute back to the project. Uh, but then also we work with other 10 uppers, uh, being, you know, a, an agency, there is time where there is downtime between client projects and trying to, to leverage that, to, to give back to, uh, to WordPress. And so working with those folks that may only have a couple hours a week, um, you know, maybe spread over a month to, to focus on something. And so our team works with them as well. So, you know, 10 up has a blended approach there of, of both folks that are dedicated, uh, and then, you know, those that are not that, that are working in client projects, um, have some of their availability time to, to give back. Cool. Angela. I think, uh, the way it works at automatic is yes, we do have a division that is around, gosh, we've grown so quickly this past year. I think we're about a hundred people now and uh, we spend our time full time on the open source project. Um, so yes, there is the rest of automatic um, and they have, uh, you know, all of, like .com, Jetpack, all of that. Uh, but my division, um, which is led by Josefa, is uh, we spent all of our time on the project and it's, it's really cool to see how that division has grown. It started out um, in the early years before I was there as a community team and a, a developer team. Um, and since then, it's expanded quite a bit into, uh, yes, still a lot of development teams, but also uh, design and themes and uh, still community, um, some on contributor tools and one of our newest teams is focused on Learn WordPress. Um, and so we work uh, very closely with all of the contributors in all of those areas. Uh, I, 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 I love all the themes and topics and, and really the, the ability for folks in all sorts of problems across, you know, obviously 10 up and automatic to be able to contribute in different ways. So, you know, sort of what we're kind of circling here is obviously wordpress.org's five for the future and you know you know what is that opportunity we we talk about you know giving back so how does the sort of definition of five for the future uh what does that mean to you uh both uh you know in a lot of ways you know it's just like five percent of your time blah 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 so is that just you know as i submit a bunch of you know bug fixes or you know how, how you know I, for sure we know that that's expanding and uh, you know I'm really curious how you feel accountable to that, uh, both of you, and what's, you know, how do you sort of keep, you know, what are the bigger goals of that at Automatic 10 Up, and how can other businesses learn to do that? And then, you know, what's that sort of task methodology, and how do you really track that and, and stay honest to that mission? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so, five for the future, um, if Anybody is listening who doesn't know what that is. Uh, back in, I think I want to say it was 2014, um, Matt had made a call on organizations to dedicate 5% of their people to WordPress development. And uh, he believed that that was um, 
it, it sounded like a small percentage, um, but that it would add up uh, immeasurably. And that's what it would take to sustainably maintain the WordPress ecosystem, the open source project. And for me, uh, I think it really hit home for me during the pandemic where um, contribution from anybody and everybody was a big challenge. Like if you had spare time, um, you were probably dedicating it to either like your family, your health areas where you couldn't like where you uh, where you really needed to focus on, um, not uh, necessarily areas where you wanted to contribute. Um, and so for me, that 5% um, that I hope all WordPress ecosystem companies do consider contributing um, helps to helps us be more resilient in challenging times. It also uh, makes us more sustainable long term. Like having people who are consistently there allows us to better bring on new contributors and um, help them get onboarded into this like huge complex ecosystem um, and to help make sure they stick around. Um, so for me, that 5% is really about how we how we future-proof WordPress, um, specifically the people involved, because without the people, we're, we're nothing. Um, as to how we hold ourselves accountable, that's a great question. Um, can I pass it over to Jeff right now? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, but I, you know, I, I will come back to to find out, you know, you know, what's all the little tactical things that are done at Automatic to make sure that, yeah, sure. you're all into that. Uh, Jeff, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you know another thing that's important to highlight as well is within Five for the Future, it's not just contributing code to WordPress, the software entity, right? There is, you know, there's design, mobile. There's documentation, there's support actually within the forums, um, community itself, right? Running uh, WordCamps and, and events like that. Um, Learn.wordpress.org, you know, the, the kind of the training initiative uh, there. I mean, there's, you know, make.wordpress.org outlines all those teams. And I've been using WordPress for, I think, 14 years now. And it wasn't until about six years ago where I realized that I could could actually myself give back. I'm I'm trained technically, but my day-to-day -day job is more in product and, and PM. And, you know, I just didn't see that, you know, there was an opportunity that I could be giving back. Um, and so I think that's one thing that, that folks should realize is that it's, it's not just engineers. It's not just software engineers that can give back to the project. Really, you know, what you do in your day-to-day -day job, there's very likely a corollary within, within WordPress that would, you know, flourish more with you know that those skills brought to the project so I, I think that's one thing that that folks should realize in terms of the question you were trying to think hammer me on in terms of being accountable um you know that five percent of your resources how that's that's measured uh i don't know that there is a you know holding anybody to the you know the grindstone as it were like show us the numbers uh i think it's on folks that do care about giving back um, to the WordPress ecosystem that their businesses are riding on top of. Um, and you know, I referenced earlier in the program, there are you know different companies do it in different ways. There's companies like uh, TenUp, like I said, we have folks that are dedicated, but then we also look to pull um, partial time from folks. And, and some of that partial time goes to, um, you know, helping run WordCamps like WordCamp Asia or, um, you know, being involved with the WPCLI, those sorts of things, you know, aren't really just WordPress core. It's all the other project teams. And then you have agencies, you know, friends of ours, Web Dev Studios, they have, you know, a, a Friday where everybody in the company, you know, spends that time giving back in the way that makes sense to them, right? It's not all just contributing code to WordPress core. Um, and then you have companies like um, Bluehost and Yoast under the Newfold Digital umbrella that have, you know, very specific people dedicated um, and focusing all of their time, again, like Angela's organization at uh, Automatic um, full time, you know, for, for 10 up, we try and at least track the <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard, but we try and track how much time folks are, are spending and contributing and giving back. And then, you know, every year as part of our annual roll up post that uh, Jake Goldman shares on the 10 up blog, we try and highlight, you know, what some of those 
those numbers are. Um, you know, last year, I think we had 6,500 hours that folks contributed um, across, you know, the various ways that tech uppers give back, um, you know, and that that goes all the way up to folks like my, you know, um, you know, partner in crime, Helen, who's led many, many major WordPress releases. And we have other people on the team that are, um, you know, also noteworthy contributors on all those releases. But then it trickles down to the the, the smaller, you know, just being in the support forums and helping somebody, you know, sp- spending an hour, a couple minutes a day, just giving back um, there is also, you know, super relevant. And, and depending on, you know, the shape and size of an, an agency, a, you know, a, a freelance developer, a product company, like there's different approaches that they can take and there's different ways in which they can contribute. Um, sometimes it just takes a moment to actually go to make.wordpress.org and, and just see really, you know, how you could give back, um, you know, where those teams are and, and, and how to, to meet up with them. Along that those lines, I guess it's really about thing you need to embed in the culture, right? Is that kind of what I'm hearing? That's a great way of putting it. I love it. Hey, Bob WP here, and I'd like to take a moment to thank two of our pod friends for their support of Do The Woo. You do what you're good at, and when building your client's WooCommerce shops, often it's a perfect opportunity to partner up with someone that fills in those gaps to make your client 100% happy. Mind Size has helped individual stores handle hundreds of millions of dollars worth of orders. They know their stuff. Their site performance audit with ongoing monitoring and iterative performance improvements are key to help you optimize your next client project. So with Mind Size, they're a great partner to consider, to hook up with, and make sure your clients are 100% satisfied with the performance of their sites. Visit mindsize.com to learn more. Need to help your clients create optimized sales funnels using their WooCommerce shop? WooFunnels gives you and your clients all the tools needed to create high converting funnels using WooCommerce. And to add to that, their CRM lets you create broadcasts and automated workflows with unlimited contacts. Because in the end, it's not just building the shop, but building sales and a solid customer base. Visit buildwoofunnels.com to learn more. And now let's head back to the show. Yeah, sure. And I can speak a little bit more towards um, how other companies can participate as well. So uh, we did build the Five for the Future page. Um, it's wordpress.org uh, slash five for the future. Um, but uh, there's we ran into some challenges there because it, it runs on the honor system and we did end up with a surprising number of spam pledges, uh, which makes it really hard to surface the actual real pledges. So there's, um, there's a post up right now about how to clean some of that up. Um, and it's made some suggestions like emailing absent contributors and asking them to confirm. Um, but ideally, we end up with uh, some maybe some more checks, um, more collaboration with team reps and contributor teams. And that way we can really identify um, who is actively participating in Five for the Future. Um, and I do want to echo uh, what Jeff said. Like there's a lot of different ways that companies can structure how they do, how they participate in Five for the Future. Um, I love, Robert, what you said about embedding it in the culture because I think um, like open source culture is real and bringing that to your uh, your team, especially how we view good communication, uh, collaboration. I think those are really real um, benefits to any culture. Um, And then I also just want to echo uh, what Jeff said, that anybody can contribute and it doesn't have to be just uh, engineering or development. Um, I don't know any code at all. um, And I am so thrilled to be deeply embedded in this community. It's um, been a real joy to be able to do that. Yeah, that was the thing, too, that I was thinking when Jeff was talking. I was like, I was so glad to hear you say that because so, so many people think this and this is and this is like a lot of different open source, too. They think the only way that you really are contributing is to 
you know, write some code and submit that. That is not that that is part of it. Obviously, we need that. But like documentation. Oh, my goodness. I call it the redheaded stepchild. Right. I mean, it's it's always ignored. But that's that's one place. If you don't if you can't do anything else, you could go and help contribute on the documentation, because if you've been looking at all, you've had to look up anything. That means there's a need. Right. And so if you've Googled it and you couldn't find it, maybe you need to go and see if you can contribute some documentation on it. So I I, I love that you brought that up, Jeff. Um, and I think that that is something that um, businesses should try to uh, explain to to their employees. I mean, they could even get contractors, uh, clients involved in this as well. Um, so, Jeff, do you guys talk about this internally as well? Um, and have you ever gotten your clients involved, even if it was just case studies or something like that? Have we gotten clients involved? I mean, I I, I know it's something that you know, it definitely brings clients to 10 up, right? That they see that we are, you know, we, we do tend and care to, um, you know, WordPress as something that we're, um, you know, thriving because of, um, I think it, you know, as an agency, we, we are, you know, benefited because of that. Um, you know, there are some clients that we work with that also give back. Um, and so there is a, probably a stronger bond between, um, you know, company or consulting and, and client relationship there um, because of that that shared interest. Um, I'm sure that's that's helped um, again bring bring folks to 10 up but um, I don't know that it's a pointed part of, of every you know site we might build or app we might craft for a client um, that we're purposely trying to you know have that client give back certainly as we are building things um, and we see that, something that we built for a client might make sense in, you know, other cases to other, you know, to other publishers, to other small or medium sized entities that we look to try and carve that out. If it's, you know, a fix or enhancement in core contributing there, if it's not, you know, in the extender part of the community, right. Carving that out. And maybe it's a, a plugin that, that solves a particular problem for a client we work with and then, you know, kind of working with them and, and having that shared publicly and, and, contributed in that way um, to the extending part of, of WordPress. So not just core itself, but, you know, all of the, the plugins and themes on top of it, there is that part that TEDUP does tend to work with um, our clients in terms of contributing back. Like, I think we've talked a lot about uh, contributing for, like, because it's a wonderful thing to do to be able to give back. It's really, like, it's really incredible to be able to have that kind of impact, especially with a project like WordPress, which has such an immense scale. Um, but there's also other benefits to contributing um, that I think I would love to see us talk a little bit more about. Um, because we're not just like one skill kind of people. Like we have a lot of different skills to bring and a lot of different skills that we can grow as well. And WordPress is a great place to like apply those skills and develop them further. So yes, if I am a engineer and I'm contributing code, uh, but also I want to become better at technical writing, like, yeah. Oh, I'd love to put you over on the documentation team and um, work with other people who do this regularly, and you can just keep building up those skills as well. Um, and so you're contributing while you're also growing. And that, I think, is a really big draw for people, or it should be. Yeah, absolutely. And Robert, I'm going to ask you, just like I'm asking the guest. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be the uh, the wonderful Robbie Lackey co-host, but... Uh, I ran an open source agency for a number of years, and there were times when I want to touch this on with like ten up and and what Jeff and his team do. There would be a scope, and we we would sit there, we would ask the client, like, "Can we open source this before we even get going on this?" You know, we're happy to put a whole bunch of uh, you know social media around. I mean, there's a, there's actually a business opportunity to be had by you know getting buy in from your client because then they're going to see that. Oh yeah, we're going to be the ones who are funding this open source aspect. Obviously, as an agency, we're going to you know toot all the horns for that uh, customer. That oh, you know, these guys help make this happen. So they're getting free marketing and advertising and awareness around that kind of stuff. 
we're all talking about the passions of open source, but there are real direct advantages to working with open source and having your customers kind of get that experience, quote unquote, giant, giant, quote unquote, indoctrination uh, that, you know, you've done internally so that they have a f- feeling for how you work as a company, how, you know, how automatic works with, you know, all the plugins and themes and whatnots and, and, you know, WooCommerce being part of that family. And then as an agency, how you're building out custom tools and things, but that can actually be put back into the community for a greater experience. But you mentioned WCLI. We at uh, Cloudways do the same thing. You know, we do a ton of contribution at WCLI. It, it's a core thing for us. So we want to contribute that. So other people also have great ideas. And then we can, you know, back and forth, back and forth, that refinement of ideas. So thanks, Robbie. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I love this open source stuff, as you know. Yes. So. <laughs> and, you know, and another another way that um, you could contribute is speaking. And I know that I think both of you guys probably do a lot of speaking. Robert and I do as well. I think it's, you know, it's it's one of the best ways. It's kind of the same thing, right? You're working on a project. And you're like, wow, this was difficult to figure out or is whatever. Let me make us let me make a little talk, a session about this and then take it to the work camps, you know, and, and, and share this with other people so they can learn as well. And I will say that I feel like the speaking gigs have changed, obviously, in this last year and a half with the, with the pandemic, but they're still there. Um, and so you guys do speak uh, at, at events. Can you give us some of the uh, the type of uh, talks that you do and what drives you to do those uh, events. Jeff, I'll start with you. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think, ironically, the previous talk that I gave was a, uh, a WordCamp about just how to give back, you're like, how to contribute to to WordPress, um, you know, and it did touch on all the different teams on make.wordpress.org and try and, you know, draw corollaries for, you know, if your day-to-day job is, you know, a QA specialist, you know, there's the the test team, right? Get it in there. And it doesn't have to be testing specific, you know, patches or Gutenberg pull requests. It could be, you know, when WordPress is going through its its beta RC or release candidate and final releases, there's folks in there helping test that, yeah, like WordPress doesn't blow up. Um, there's also Ann McCarthy, who's uh, does a lot of call for testing for, um full site editing and, and the advancements that are coming, um, in, in hopefully 5.9 later this year, as well as, is farther into the future. And there are very specific ways that people can just test, you know, just maybe building a simple little portfolio site for yourself using these new tools so that that experience and your feedback can inform, um, how that is, is further enhanced. So yeah, talks don't have to be this was, you know, a technical problem. This is how I solved it with code again, right? It doesn't have to be this corollary of just WordPress core, just software engineering. You know, it can be, you know, designers, marketers, project managers, et cetera, and the different ways you can contribute. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the, the, the most recent talk that I gave mine. Again, my background is not technical, so mine don't tend to be um, technical in nature. And, and so the different types of talks can be um, almost reflective of the different types of teams there are within the project. Awesome. That was just a coincidence. I didn't know that's what you had spoken on last time. <laughs> <laughs> and not, that was not a plant in the, no, it uh, wasn't. the audience there with that question. No, it was yeah. not. Uh, so, Angela, what about yourself? Uh, speaking gigs? Yeah, uh, well, coincidentally, uh, the last talk I gave in the WordPress space was also about Five for the Future and how uh, how to contribute and the benefits uh, for organizations that do participate in Five for the Future. Um, but yeah, I've uh, given a number of very similar talks around how to get involved in the WordPress community, uh, where you can contribute um, if you're if you're not a developer, if you are a developer, and um, you know when I started in the WordPress community, I was a really nervous speaker, and to this day, I still get kind of nervous sometimes. Um, and so, one of my it was something that I wanted to work on. I wanted to become a better public speaker. And so one of the first things that I did was Jill Binder has a diverse speaker training workshop. It's it's incredible. It's really hands-on in 
bringing people who um, are underrepresented in tech and want to speak at a WordPress event. Um, and it it works with them to create the topic, uh, create your pitch, create the talk, um, and even how to put together your bio and submit an application. Um, and so the idea behind this workshop was that anybody could run the workshop in their local community. So one of the first things I did, because I was a nervous speaker, I said, okay, I'm going to gather everybody else who was nervous with me, and we're going to run this workshop together. And uh, that was, I think, one of my very first speaking uh, opportunities in WordPress, and it was really empowering for me. That's also awesome, and I, I've seen lots of good feedback about Jill's uh, workshop, by the way. And, and I love to see that it is helping people break into speaking that normally one they probably wouldn't have even tried to submit, um, but two that they feel confident enough now to do that. And I think it also makes the organizers, when they see that these workshops are going on, be a little more um, aware that they need to maybe give more more help in how you should submit to their their events. So I think we're seeing better information out there. When I go to look to submit a talk now, I feel like there's more direction there of we want this type of these topics we're looking for. We want them in, you know, workshop or we want them in session. And so I think that that, that we're seeing a whole lot of change around that area. Um, and so I love that because I do feel like we're getting more speakers that were not there before. Awesome. Robert, I'm going to let you go. I, I interrupted your question there, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I, I, first and foremost, without a doubt, I mean, what, what, what you know, I, I got into the open source community just around 20 years ago. You know, I, I had found two hugely relevant things. One, and they're so broadly generic, and I hope you guys can window them down. Uh, you know, there's an immense amount of personal growth and appreciation that happens in a lot of open uh, source communities, but especially WordPress. And, you know, we can talk about those aspects. Uh, I'd love to hear personal experiences around that. But then the professional stuff, and I know, in our household stuff is not a word. So I've seen people really take advantage of different types of you know, professional opportunities by doing open source work. You know, when we talked about not just the coding aspects, because that's the that's almost the old school way of thinking about open source, because open source is more than just the code. It's obviously the community and the ecosystem. So, you know, I, I'd love to hear personal experience of it, not, you know, both on the personal side and the professional side, how that's kind of move you through life. Sure. I can jump in that or start. I mean, I think, um, you know, from a professional growth, uh, when I first started contributing to WordPress, it was, uh, uh alongside Helen and, and Aaron Jorbin and, and helping co-lead the, uh, you know, WordPress release 4.7. And from that, the, the people that I met in the project, the network I built, you know, brought me now here to 10 up and has, um, you know, given me other opportunities across the project to meet more people and, and, you know, learn things from them. And, and, you know, those professional relationships have oftentimes turned into very enjoyable personal ones as well. Um, I think for, you know, somebody that might be a freelance developer or at an agency or product company that, um, you know, might want to grow their, grow their, um, network or, you know, learn specific skills. The WordPress project offers so many different ways in which you could contribute and, and gain experience that maybe your individual role at a company may not afford you. Um, you know, again, with very minimal time and very minimal investment to maybe learn more about marketing or learn more about, you know, documentation or design, you know, that doesn't have to be your day-to-day -day role, um, you know, and you can look at that as a way to um, grow professionally by, you know, just in a very minimal way, giving back to the open web and the WordPress project. Yeah, um, I think personally, it uh, it regularly surprises people to know that before I joined Automatic, I was a program manager at a commercial real estate consulting firm in Seattle. Um, and while well, I I had a great team there, I liked that job. It was not what I wanted to do long term with. Uh, with my career at all. Um, I really, I had gotten into volunteering. I was doing a lot of volunteering and I wanted to get more into the strategic side of community building. And so that's kind of how I found my way into Automatic and really where 
like my my professional career, uh, my desired professional career really took off. And it really came from working alongside the giants in our community, like these people who have been there, like working daily to do the thing. And that was a that was an amazing opportunity for me to learn community management alongside a lot of really incredible contributors, um, especially when I feel like community management is an area that like I share with my parents what I do and they don't really fully understand it because back then it like, it wasn't a thing. <laughs> and so like finding people who are like-minded and in this great environment has been literally life-changing for me. That's awesome. I, I will say, just like Robert, I've also been in the open source world for 20 years. Um, and before that, it was in corporate America. And it was quite different going into the open source world from a big corporation. And I saw a, a lot of personal growth, especially just immediately. It was just so different. And, and it was so sharing among other people and learning from other people. And I loved it. And so it really did. Uh, I saw a lot of both personal and professional growth myself for that. And so, by the way, thank you both because your your being on this podcast on Do the Woo is contributing back. You're talking to other people, other business owners out there. We hope will will listen to this and be inspired. And so, we thank you for that. But uh, in case people want to talk to you after this, tell us where can they find you. We'll start with you, Jeff. Uh, sure. Yeah. Twitter.com slash Jeff Paul. Really at Jeff Paul as a handle. I can be found on most places. LinkedIn, WordPress, Slack, et cetera. So um, happy to chat, um, ideally in public if possible, but, you know, certainly private conversations to help guide and, and, you know, help folks find their way into the project if they haven't yet. Would love to have those conversations. So, and Angela? And uh, yeah, Twitter, Angela S. Jin, um, and that's the same handle just about everywhere else as well. Um, the WordPress making Slack, uh, the LinkedIn, everywhere else. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much, folks. Uh, th this was, I mean, yeah, I love open source. I think we all obviously do. And I, and I hope our, our, our audience that, uh, take away some ideas of how they can first and foremost contribute back to, uh, you know, the WordPress universe and ecosystem, but that you can actually get, you know, stuff comes back to you all the time. So don't forget about that. I totally did not memorize on the fly everyone's Twitter accounts, but certainly, uh, automatic.com uh, and 10 up.com. Thanks so much, uh, Angela and Jeff. It was really great to have you guys here. Hey, everyone, Bob WP. Thanks again for tuning in to today's show. I would like to give one more shout out to our two pod friends. If you need a real boost for your client's site performance, consider partnering up with MindSize and experience their site performance audit. Learn more at mindsize.com. And don't forget, WooFunnels gives you all the tools to help you create high converting funnels for your client's shop. Find them at WooFunnels.com. And of course, you can always stay on top of our episodes by subscribing to Do The Woo on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. So until next time, keep on doing the woo.